Hello, and welcome to this course with Groove 3. This series is all about how to make interesting instruments and sound design patches using the Native Instruments plugins. Each of these videos will dive into a specific technique or concept, so you can feel free to follow along however you'd like. You can work through the videos chronologically, or you could skip around depending on what you'd like to learn. In the first video, I want to show off some helpful tips using some of the Native Instruments synthesizers on how to take a super simple synth patch and turn that into something a lot more engaging. So that way you can make your arrangements a lot more interesting without them being a lot more complex. I find this could be especially helpful whenever you're working on a track that has a vocalist on it or something that you know you're going to want to bring in a top liner to work on a bit later. This will give you the option to have a lot of space being filled out in your record. All the sounds are nice and interesting, but there's not tons of additional layers. There's still plenty of space to write a vocal on top of it. Each of the techniques that I'll be showing in this video can also be recreated with a variety of different plugins or samples. So you can use a lot of these on sample material or in other Native Instruments devices if you'd like. I'll also make sure to include all these Ableton projects and patches and everything inside the course materials on Groove3's website. So if you'd like to follow along that way, you can do so as well. So first I'll show you how to make this simple synth patch, which will just sound like this. And then I'll show you how to take that patch and turn it into something a lot more engaging that could actually be used in production. So really, in a lot of ways, it's exactly the same patch. There's just a few very strategic modulations being added to this that makes this super simple sine wave keys into something that could actually be used in a production. So now we have this simple keys element that could actually be like a main part in a song. So let me go ahead and reset this device down here. Um, by the way, I'll show you these chords here in a minute, but let's grab a new copy of Massive X. Let's go to my VSTs and I will drag and drop that in. Um, and actually, let's go ahead and just turn that on so we can audition that. Then if you're curious what these chords are, here is those chords. I'm gonna make those a little bit larger. I'm just working in the key of G sharp major. Um, and they're just basically just simple triad chords here. Um, some of these notes do go slightly out of the key, like you can see right here. But that's just what's happening with this chord progression, in case you're curious. But for this video, that's not super important because we're just focusing on that patch. But if you are wondering what that is with the MIDI, um, you can also download that in the course materials. So let's go ahead and get started off with our simple patch. So for the first thing that we'll want to do is go over to our waveform and go ahead and turn that to a sine wave. So I'm going to put that all the way over to the left. Now it sounds like this. This gives me that super simple sine wave tone. Now by itself, that's not very interesting if we listen to those chords. Just gives us a ultra, ultra simple tone. We wanna to make that more of like a keys patch. Go ahead and drop that sustain all the way down. And then let's increase that decay up just slightly, maybe just slightly under eight seconds at a touch of release. And that's just gonna give us this ultra simple patch. Also here, there's a little click at the start of that, so let's eliminate that by increasing the attack. There we go, that's sounding nice. So now we can go ahead and start messing around with the different elements inside of here to make this patch a lot more engaging, because that's just the basic synthesized key sound with the sine wave. So the first of the techniques I want to cover in this video is how to take this patch and make it more interesting using some detuning. So we'll create this through some modulation. Basically what we're gonna be doing here is individually kind of retuning each of those notes to drift just slightly, much like you'd have happen on an analog synthesizer. That's gonna introduce some natural chorusing and modulation in my whole tone. And that'll make that whole key patch a lot more interesting. Even though it's a super subtle modulation, it'll just make that whole track feel a lot more interesting. So there's a couple ways to do this. We'll be using the same LFO in a lot of these different parameters. We'll be using this modulator right here. I'm gonna swap over to my LFOs. That'll be this switcher LFO number four, so modulator number four. I will click on this, and we're going to go ahead and drag that over to the pitch of my first oscillator. So if you have multiple oscillators, go ahead and layer that onto this other oscillator over here. But in our case, we just want that on oscillator number one. Now let's go ahead and swap that to a sine wave, so that way we get a nice and smooth modulation. Because we'll be using this for a couple of different things. Maybe bring that rate down just a little bit. We'll do 4.07. Um, that we could always play around with that if we need to. So whenever I click on this, I can go ahead and drag this up. You're gonna see now it's moving this up by six semitones. 
This is going to be quite extreme, but this will just show you how this is going to sound in terms of what it's doing to the modulation. And then we'll use this on a much more subtle value here in a moment to actually make the main patch here. I just want to show you exactly what this is doing. So this is what it sounds like. So it's introducing that pitch modulation into my signal. Now, obviously that is way too intense. Let me go ahead and double click on that to reset it. I'm going to click on these smaller numbers here over on the right. I want to increase this to 0 0.05. So it's just introducing a tiny little bit of scent modulation into my notes. Especially when those notes are held down towards the end of it, you kind of hear that little bit of warbling happening. And what that's doing is just introducing just a touch of modulation into my tone. That just makes that whole keys patch feel a lot more interesting because now there's just a little bit of movement happening. It's very subtle, but it's already taking that synth patch and making it a lot more engaging. Especially if you just had like these keys, maybe a pad layer underneath it, a vocal and some drums. Now we actually have something that could fill out a production because it's a little bit more engaging. Now the other thing to note here on this LFO is we have quite a few different options. There's this mono control down here at the bottom. Basically what this will do is have this LFO always be the same for each of those individual notes that are being triggered. Um, it's almost like an envelope. We go back to these envelopes, for example. Every time I press a note, it's always following this envelope. And same thing with this LFO, if we turn it to mono. Kind of adds just a little bit more cohesion, listen to without it. So each of the individual notes are all moving on their own, uh, independent of one another with this modulator. But whenever this is turned on, they're all moving together. Uh, that'll make a little bit more sense once I show you the next modulation they'll be entering in. So we could revisit this here in a moment once we talk about the pan control. So that'll be the next modulation, and that's the next way that we can also make this patch more engaging, is providing just a little bit of stereo movement to the overall synth sound. So let's take that same LFO, so that way there's a nice cohesive quality to everything. Let's click on that and go over to my pan control. And then I click on this, and increase that, and now it's going to pan from left to right. Listen to what this sounds like. So now it's just making that whole patch move a little bit more in the stereo spectrum, and that creates a much more engaging synth patch. So basically we're creating an auto pan style effect just using this modulation right here. And now back to that mono control, listen to what it sounds like whenever this is turned off. Each of those individual notes are panning on their own. With it. A lot more cohesive, so it just depends on what you're going for. I think in this case, I kind of like how each of those individual notes are all moving on their own. So I'm going to turn off mono, but that's just a personal preference depending on what you'd like. Let's also have that be less on the modulation here because we're not looking for something super extreme. We're looking for subtle adjustments that can take this ultra simple synth keys and make it more engaging. Maybe just a little bit more. I like the sound of that. Then the next control that we'll be adjusting is going to be our level control. So we introduced some pan modulation and movement to the stereo spectrum. Now let's introduce some movement into the amplifier. So that's going to be the volume of my synth, so that way it's just moving up and down just slightly. And that way it's not just like the static synth sound that's just playing the stab. It's actually kind of moving up and down. That'll create a much more organic sound. If we think about a lot of acoustic instruments like a guitar or a piano, or even violins, even if you're bowing a note on a violin, it's not going to be perfectly the exact same volume. Even if your violin player is super, super good, there's always going to be subtle variations in that. And that's what makes these instruments sound a lot more engaging. So we're going to do that same type of thing with the amplifier. So let's add just a little bit of movement. I'm going to turn that down just a little bit so we can modulate up and down. Um, and by the way, let me just overdo this real quick. So it introduces kind of that pumping effect. And obviously we don't want quite that much, we just want a really subtle effect here. Then the next modulation that we'll be introducing is going to be some wavetable modulation. So those will be specific to the synthesizer that you're using. In our case, we have these wavetables that allow us to scan between different waveforms. So on the left here, we have the sine wave. And then as I increase this, you can see that that waveform is changing. So we're going to introduce just a little bit of subtle movement to my waveform. So that way that waveform doesn't remain static throughout the synth patch. It's slowly evolving as things play back. 
This can actually be done in really extreme ways as well. If you think about a lot of those dubstep basses or even DMB like super heavy growl bass lines, a lot of them are created through really intense wavetable modulation. So even though we're doing this in a more subtle modulation, you can actually use this in a really extreme way uh, to create all sorts of interesting textured bass lines as well. So let's just increase that just a little bit. So you can hear now it's introducing some interesting artifacts into the tone of my synthesizer patch because that waveform is slowly evolving as my sound plays back. Um, now I don't want quite that much modulation. Again, we're looking for subtlety here, so I'm just going to do a little bit of that. So now we've really taken that sine wave keys and made it a lot more interesting. Then the last thing I want to add onto my synthesizer patch is going to be some modulation and some delay. And the reason we're doing it this way is so that we can add kind of this interesting spatial element, but it's also going to add a depth to my sound, almost like a reverb would, but it's not going to clutter up the main synth patch because again, we're trying to keep it nice and simple. We don't want it to be ultra reverbed out or anything, but I do want to add in some natural chorusing and modulation and movement. We could do that all strategically using a delay plugin. So let's go over to my effects on here and we are looking for the stereo delay. Make sure that is not synced to the project BPM, so that way we just have these individual adjustments that we could make. Turn these down just a little bit. So they're like 176 or so milliseconds. And we want these to be slightly different from one another. So this is 173, and this one is 176. So it's creating those really nice little short delays, and they're not synced up to the project BPM. So that way they're almost acting more like a weird reverb element. Let's have that feedback be quite a bit shorter. I just want one copy of that delay signal. So if we listen to it. If we listen to it, it's giving us that slap back delay. And then let's go ahead and increase the flutter quite a bit to like 82.8. That's going to introduce some pitch modulation movement. So you can hear now there's that movement happening. Maybe even lower. And that's just giving us this depth to my sound. But it's not cluttering up that sound with a really deep reverb. We could still keep everything nice and dry sounding, but now we have a little bit more depth inside of our sound. Whereas before, just that simple sine wave sounded like this. And then after, it's a lot more engaging, but it's still nice and simple. So from here, feel free to adjust any of those parameters. You could either use all those techniques together, or you could use some of them individually, just depending on what you need for a given sound. But that's some ways that you can create interesting but simple patches using some strategic, subtle modulations. I recommend trying this out, especially if you're trying to keep your production nice and minimal, but you're finding that your sounds just need a little bit more of something to make them sound nice inside of a track. I'd recommend playing around with the modulation in order to make them more engaging. Thanks for checking out this video. I'll see you in the next one.